Hey class, Mr. Moody here. Uh, one thing we uh, didn't quite get to in class was discussing how U substitution is not so much something that goes beyond the reverse chain rule. Uh, in some sense, it can serve as an alternate method in case you don't like using the reverse chain rule if you uh, forget how to use it or if you're not sure when to use it. You can essentially use the reverse chain rule only in certain situations, whereas you can use U substitution for everything the reverse chain rule would apply to plus other situations. So I want us to work through this particular problem in two different methods. I'll try to show you uh, both methods and you can kind of pick for yourself the advantages and disadvantages of both methods. So we'll first approach this from the sense of a U substitution problem. So I'm going to rewrite this slightly um, as 50x to the fourth times 1 over 5x to the fifth plus 3. So you can see I sort of have an you know, inner part in the sense that this is having math done upon it, which is 1 over all that, and then I have this outer part next to it. So uh, you know, normally I would check to see if the reverse chain rule works, but since I'm kind of forcing to use substitution, I'm going to go ahead and let u equal 5x plus 5 to the third power. So here's my assumption. My consequence from the assumption, I'm actually not going to solve this for x. In part, you can see that solving it for x would be a pain in the butt. Uh, moreover, notice that the x ones are going to work out nicely in this problem. So, uh, let's see. I'm going to go ahead and take the derivative of both sides. So du dx is equal to, let's say, 25x to the fourth. And if I solve this thing for dx, I get du over 25x to the fourth equals uh, dx. Sorry, solve for dx. I may have misspoken there. So I skipped a couple of steps there, but hopefully you can see pretty straightforward algebra. So I'm not going to go back to my original problem, and I'm going to make some substitutions. Now notice, I don't have an explicit x to the fourth, and that's okay. But notice that I have another x to the fourth right here. So 50x to the fourth is going to stay there. Times 1 over, well, I'm calling this business here u. And du... Uh, sorry, dx is all this business here. So uh, du over 25x to the fourth. So we had a kind of a, a traffic jam there. Uh, so let's simplify this a bit. 50x to the fourth times 1 over u. I'm going to go ahead and write this as a fraction. 1 over 25x to the fourth times du. Well, I have x to the fourth multiplying uh, times 1 over x to the fourth. So hopefully you can see that these terms will cancel very nicely. Moreover, 50 divided by 25 will just give me a nice 2. So if I went too fast there, let me kind of break it down in a bit more uh, rigorous detail. If I were to combine this term and this term, I would end up with 50x to the fourth times 1, or 50x to the fourth, over, well, over 1 times 25x to the fourth, and hopefully you can see that this would just give me 2. So these terms combined to give me 2. I also have uh, 1 over u right here, and then I have du. Well, hopefully you recognize that the integral of 1 over something uh, is going to be ln of that something. And of course, we talked about the rule of the absolute value. So ln of the absolute value of u plus c. And u, we already said, was 5x to the fifth plus 3. So this becomes 2 ln absolute value 5x to the fifth plus 3, all of which is added with C. Uh, now, on the AP test, this might be an option. If it's not, uh, just remember properties of logarithms. You can bring the exponent up top here, which is to say this is ln of 5x to the fifth plus 3 squared, because uh, properties of logarithms allow you to do this. Uh, I don't have time to go over the details now, but you may remember that. Now, you'll notice the absolute value bars disappeared. In general, you don't want to do that, but I know that anything squared is going to be positive. Thus, it plays the same role as an absolute value. So there's the U substitution approach. Notice that uh, it's a little bit easier than the, uh, the U substitution problems we've seen thus far in that I didn't have to solve for X and have uh, you know, a more complicated integrand. Uh, and that's useful. Um, when I do have this nice exponent property, or at least the derivative property. So let's look at the same problem through a different lens. Let's look at this problem now in the context of um, the reverse chain rule. So going back to this step right here, I'm going to try
try to squeeze this in. Zoom in a bit. I rewrote it as 50x to the fourth times 1 over 5x to the fifth plus 3 dx. So if you go use substitution method, you can just, uh, you know, dive in from there. Instead, I'm going to see if I can uh, wiggle this a bit to make it work nicely. So the inside part is here. Do I have the derivative of the inside chained next to it? If I do, then I know the chain rule has been applied here. Because remember, this is the derivative of our answer function, which we've got to figure out. Well, what is the derivative of this part? Well, that would be 5 to 25x to the fourth. So I need 25x to the fourth. Do I have it? No, but, you know, i got 50x to the fourth. It's pretty good. It's still x to the fourth. It only differs by a constant multiple. So I'm going to make this into 25x to the fourth. How am I going to do that? I'm going to cheat a little bit, and I'm going to multiply by a half, because I know that half of 50 is 25. And now this is going to be exactly what I want. However, that one half is my addition to the problem, so to speak. It's new. So I'm going to, you know, atone for that by multiplying by two. Because the net result of my two changes here is to say I'm multiplying by 1. And multiplying by 1 does not change anything. It's the identity. So this 2 comes from sort of my atonement for my cheat here. Uh, I'm going to rewrite this section here as 25x to the 4th times 1 over 5x to the 5th plus 3 dx. Do I now have what I wanted? Yes, I do. Very nice. Smiley face. Uh, just a cute little flourish. So the 2 still out here. Um, since I know that this is the chain of the inside part, I know that when I do the antiderivative, it's going to sort of chain back in. It's going to sort of reel itself back in. So really, I'm focused on this section here, 1 over this business. So the integral of 1 over business is going to be ln of the absolute value of that business, plus c. And you can see, already, we've jumped to the answer that we had to do several more steps for to get to right here. And again, you can do properties of logarithms, but this step is equal to that step. So hopefully you can see why, uh, at least in my uh, point of view, I prefer the reverse chain rule. And if that fails to hold, you can do u-substitution. Um, of course, you can use u-substitution uh, you know, for a reverse chain rule problem, but if you take a look at the amount of work, uh, it's quite a bit more. Nevertheless, the more tools you have, the more capable you will be. Alrighty, hope this helps.